All right, hi everybody. So we're going to continue with chapter 11, talking about solutions, and today we're going to talk about factors that affect solubility. Um, there are three basic factors that will affect solubility, structure, pressure, and temperature. So we're going to look at each of those. So the first one is structure. And to talk about structure, we're going to look at vitamins. Sometimes you can have what's called too much of a good thing with vitamins, and that's due to the fact that there are two main types. Okay. Um, and they differ in solubility based on their structure. So the first type is fat soluble, and some examples of that are vitamin A, D, E, and K. Well, if they're fat soluble, that means that they're hydrophobic, and so they're water fearing, which means that they are fat loving. And the reason that we differentiate between those two is because water is a polar substance, whereas fat is a nonpolar substance. So these vitamins, because they're water fearing and fat loving, um, are attracted to fat. Well, fat is nonpolar, and so are these vitamins. And so we're going right along with what we talked about before, which was like dissolve like. The other type, oh, we're we'll talking about that real quick. Um, these can build up in your body because they can be stored, you know, with your fat. And if you eat too much of certain kinds of these vitamins, um, you can get what's called hypervitaminosis, which means that you've got too much vitamin A in your body. So you can take too much of certain vitamins. The other type is water soluble, mainly vitamin B and C. These are what are called hydrophilic, which means that they're water loving. And so because they like water, they must have similar properties to water. While well, water is polar, and so are these vitamins. These vitamins you can take pretty much as much as you want, and they will just be flushed out of your body because they are similar in structure to water. So they'll dissolve in water and not dissolve in fat. So here are some differences between the vitamin structures. This is vitamin A, and so although we've got an OH group on the end, we've got several carbons. If you remember from section two, we talked about how each of these points represents a carbon atom. Okay, so we've got really long chain. This is nonpolar. Here we've got vitamin C. We've got lots of OH groups, um, and so that's giving us more of a polar structure. So the next thing that will affect solubility is pressure. So if you take a look at this graph up here, we've got solids and liquids with a straight line, no slope. So that tells us that solubility is not affected by pressure when it comes to solids and liquids. Gas, on the other hand, looks to increase uh, as pressure increases. Okay, not linear, but still solubility is increasing. So we can say that pressure will affect gas solubility a lot more than liquids or solids. And this is why uh, we bottle soda at really high pressure, because it allows more of the CO2 to concentrate into the soda and, you know, makes your pop not flat, basically. And then when you open it, uh, the CO2 escapes because of that difference in pressure. So if you leave your can of soda on the counter all night, drink it the next morning, which is gross for several reasons, um, but it's also going to be flat because all the CO2 has come out of the liquid. We can look at the relationship between pressure and concentration using what's called Henry's Law. And so we've got C for concentration is equal to K, which is a constant, which will be given, uh, times P, which is pressure. And this is a positive relationship. So we can see that as pressure increases, concentration increases. This works better if we have dilute solutions of gases and gases that don't dissociate in or react with the solvent. Um, so you're going to get the best results if you have something like that. Okay, so let's look at an example using Henry's Law. Okay, so it says a certain soft drink uh, is bottled so that a bottle at, so we've got a temperature of 25 Celsius, contains CO2 gas at a pressure of 5 atmospheres over the liquid. So I'm going to put P equals 5 atmospheres. Assuming that the partial pressure of CO2 in the atmosphere, so this is bottled, partial pressure is 4 times 10 to the negative 4 atmospheres. So we have two different pressures. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations of CO2 in the soda both before and after the bottle is opened. So we want concentration at bottling and concentration in regular pressure or after. It also tells us that Henry's Law constant for CO2 in aqueous solution is 3.1 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter atmosphere. And at 25C, and that's where everything else is at, so we're good there. 
So our equation is C equals K times P. So let's do the bottled one first. We're going to take our K value. Multiply by our bottled pressure, which is 5 atmospheres. So keep in mind that if you are going to use this equation, because the units of K are moles per liter atmosphere, your pressure needs to be in atmospheres. If it's Tor or something else, then you're going to need to change it. And let's grab the calculator. So, okay, we're going to take our 3.1 times 10 to the negative second and multiply that by 5. Okay, and so we get 1,550. Oh, I did 2, not negative 2. Big difference there. Oh, let's start over. Okay, 3.1. See, this is why it's important to check your answer. Make sure it makes sense. Negative 2. There we go. Okay, now let's multiply by 5. This should give us ah, much more reasonable. Okay, so now we've got 0 0.155. Let's take a look at our unit. Atmospheres on top, atmospheres on the bottom, moles per liter. Since we are looking for concentration, that makes sense. That's reasonable. Okay, let's now take a look at our other um, concentration after the soda is opened. Same equation, same K value. Different pressure. In this case, we've got the partial pressure of CO2 in the atmosphere, which is 4 times 10 to the negative 4 atmospheres. Okay, so let's multiply those together. Hopefully I will type it in correctly this time. 3.1 times 10 to the negative 2 times, we've got our 4 times 10 to the negative 4, so much smaller value than what we had before. And that's because the soda was bottled at such high pressure. Okay, that looks good. And we've got a much smaller value, which makes sense, okay? Because we know that as pressure increases, concentration increases. At this very tiny pressure, we're going to have a very tiny amount of CO2. Now, if we're looking at significant figures on both of these, we would uh, want two significant figures. So here we're going to have 0 0.16, and here we're looking at 1.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. Most leaders are concentration. Right, let's get our calculator all the way. Okay, so the last uh, type of effect that's going to affect solubility besides structure and pressure is temperature. With solids, most of the time, uh, solubility will increase with an increase in temperature, but this isn't constant for all solids, and really the only way to tell for sure is to do an experiment. Gases are a little more predictable. With a gas, the solubility will decrease as temperature increases, and this is usually the case. So we kind of have the opposite effect as with pressure. There are two examples that we can use to discuss this. The first one is thermal pollution. And what happens is basically you've got you know a big body of water, okay, and then you've got this factory. And it's taking water to cool its system. So this is cold water. And then what happens is it cools the system, and then it puts the water back. Well, because it used the water to cool its system, this water is now warm. And since we know that solubility decreases as temperature increases, this warm water has less O2. And so then we've got warm water on top. If this is a big lake, we've got really cold water at the bottom. Well, fish like to live right here. And so what happens is fish need oxygen to breathe, right, or survive, not really breathe. Right? Well, if they're in this warm water, which has less, H2, less oxygen, they're not going to live for very long. Okay? And so this water is also less dense, it can't circulate, and so it causes what's called thermal pollution because we've got this less oxygen present in this warm water. 
Something else that can occur due to temperature is what's called boiler scale. And this has to do with calcium present in the water. It forms um, calcium carbonate, which is an insoluble compound, which then builds up in uh, your pipes or you know other things that uh, carry water. So here we've got this really gross uh, calcium carbonate buildup. And so this is due to the fact that um, you know, we've got um, this calcium that deposits, and this is due to uh, temperature and solubility. So this can also affect your home and, and other factories and efficiency of water flow and things like that. Okay, so a uh, cute little cartoon that I found. Uh, let's go back. And so it says, uh, why did my soda go flat? And then, of course, the little bird says, uh, it seems as though the warm temperature has affected the solubility of the gases in the soda. Okay, and so then we've also got pressure, obviously, as well, right? Okay, and then we will close with a fun little video that I found. I hope you enjoy it.